Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. It is such a uh, thrill to be in your presence this morning. I am so thankful for your preacher, my brother, Brother David, and uh, for inviting me here this morning to share a message from God's holy word. And uh, I hope that you all had a good Christmas. Everybody have a good Christmas? All right, and we're praying that God will grant you with a happy and blessed new year. Um, you know, I was supposed to be at Impact this morning, but when Brother David called me, I said, you know what, I gotta make something happen, because I gotta get up at Alabama. I love being here with you guys. It is such a blessing and such a privilege to be here with you. And so um, I don't want to hold you too long, but I do have something that I need to say, all right? <laughs> but before I say it, I like to sing. I like singing. Singing, I tell, you, I tell you what, if I could just get the praise team to come up here and sing for 30 minutes, I'll get up and pray and we'll be done. Is that all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> So um, I'm going to ask you, ask you guys, if you would, if you would, I want to sing a song. It's called, um, I think this is what it's called. It's called Holiness. And it goes like this. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. And so if y'all would sing that with me, that would be just so wonderful as we uh, begin this uh, time of study in the word of God. Holiness. Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Do we know that, y'all? From me. So take my heart and form it, and take my mind, transform it, and take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. I think we got that. Nice. Now y'all sing it with me. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. From me. So take my heart and form it, and take my mind, transform it, and take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Thank you for indulging me with that. And as we go into the new year, this is what my prayer is, is that God would take me and that I would be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. This morning, I want to speak to you from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43. And in the book of Isaiah 43, there's a line in verses number 18 through 19. And it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, behold, look, understand and comprehend that I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 
God says, I want you to understand that what has happened in the past is the past. Good, bad, or indifferent. Don't dwell on it. Don't reminisce on it. But I want you to turn and I want you to see and focus on the future because I am doing a new thing. The good old days, the way things used to be, your past victories and failures, your past glories. He says, now, don't focus on those things because it is those things that will keep you stuck in neutral and you can't understand, you can't apprehend what it is that God is wanting to do and what God is doing right now. Now, there is context to this. The context has to do with what God did in the past when he brought Israel out of Egypt. If we would begin reading at verse uh, number 14. Verse number 14 of chapter 43. Notice what it says. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Notice, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians and the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. Listen to what God says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lie there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Then God says, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now, understand this, that this new thing that God is saying that he is doing, it goes back to verse number 14 when God says, For your sake, I will send to Babylon, I will bring down its fugitives, all the Babylonians and the ships in which they took pride. What is going on here? This passage, this prophecy that Isaiah is given to Judah, this happens before they go into exile in Babylon. And Isaiah has been warning them. Isaiah has been trying to get the people to return to God, to stop their sinful ways, to remember what God has done for them, and to respect and revere him. And God foreshadows, he prophesies about what is going to come to pass when Judah would be held captive in Babylon. He says, I want you to understand that for your sake, I'm going to send down to Babylon and I am going to bring you up out of there and the ships that they trusted in, all of the mighty uh, forces that they trusted in, they will be no match for my power. I'm going to bring you out of there. And then he says, I want you to remember what I did when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, how the chariot and his rider, they lie at the bottom of the sea. I want you to remember those things, what I did, but now I need you to understand that I'm about to do something different. You see, you can't stake your claim on what was done in the past. That was the past. That's what God did back then. And if you dwell only in what God has done back then, you can't see what God is trying to do right now in the future that God is calling you to. He says, now, don't remember that. Forget the past. You, you stake your claim on the past because 
I rescued your ancestors and I established you as a nation and as my chosen people. And so you have the tendency to rest on your laurels. Well, we are the children of God and God provided for us back then and he brought our ancestors out back then. And so we can stand firm and assure it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how things go forward from this point. But God says, forget those things that were in the past because I'm doing something new. Israel, Judah, understand what I'm trying to tell you. You have become comfortable. You have become complacent in your understanding of who I am. And you think just because I call you my people and just because I brought your ancestors out of a strange land that was not their own and just because I destroyed their enemies in, in, in the Red Sea and just because I brought them through the wilderness into the promised land that everything is going to always be okay and it doesn't matter what you do and how you treat me. God says, I need you to to forget about that because you're not treating me right. I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing something new. And when God says that I'm going to send down to Babylon and the chariots that they trust in, I'm going to bring that to naught. What is God telling them God is foreshadowing that if they don't change their ways that there is going to be a new captivity. If they don't turn to him in repentance once again he is going to have to rescue them from the hand of their captors. And then he says this In verse number verse number 19 he says see I'm doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, the wild animals under me, the jackal and the isle and, and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. God says, Do you not perceive what's going on? Do you not comprehend? Can't you see the signs of the time? That your people have become rebellious. Everyone has gone their own way. Everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes. Do you not see it? Can you not perceive it? Therefore, I'm about to do something new. What I did in Israel, did in Egypt rather, that was then. I got to do something new. I got to stir you up once again. Because what I did back then, it doesn't seem to arouse you to love me anymore. It doesn't seem to cause your courage and your faith and your strength in me to be aroused. And so therefore God says, I have to do something new. And this new thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to send some folks down to Babylon after your children have been taken captive. Remember, this was decades, if not a century, before Judah went into Babylonian captivity. 
And God is already prophesying that if his people who are called by his name will not humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, that God is going to send down to Babylon these children of yours will be led into captivity. And then once again, I'm going to call a people to myself. Once again, I'm going to deliver a people through the wasteland, through the wilderness. I'm going to feed them and I'm going to give them water just like I did before. I'm doing something new Hoping that you'll see me. Hoping that you will understand. Hoping that I can reason with you to move beyond your selfishness. To move beyond your ego. To move beyond your idolatrous ways. God is doing new things. Look forward to what God is doing. Understand the times. Perceive. God has given us all the ability to discern and to see and to understand. And if we would just engage the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to open up our minds and open up our hearts and open up our spirits and allow the Holy Spirit to pour into us, then we will be able to see and discern what it is that God is doing in our time. Notice, God says, I'm doing a new thing. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, the scripture says, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand, notice, to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Now, notice what God says here. Just like in the book of Isaiah, God is telling them about the former times, about the former things, about what he did when he brought them out of Egyptian captivity. He says, I, I, I don't want you to dwell on that anymore because I'm doing something new. Then over in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31, God says, I'm going to make a new covenant with Israel and with Judah. It's not going to be like the one I made when I took them out of Egypt and brought them into the promised land. This is going to be something totally new. It's going to be something totally different. It's going to be uh, a, a covenant that is based on the heart and not on the letter. It's going to be a covenant that is based on faith and not just on works. It's going to be a new covenant. You won't have to say no to the Lord because the Lord will be living in you because you are my people. 
And God wants us to understand that as we stand here on the last day of 2023, that as we get ready to go into the new year, don't rest on past victories. Don't let past defeats slow you down. Don't reminisce too fondly on past glories because God is in the process of doing something new. And God wants to do something new in you. God wants you to participate with him in this new season. God wants you to link up with him in this new age, in this new era, this new beginning of what God is about to do in this season. But often, oftentimes, before newness can happen, death has to occur. Before newness can begin, often death has to occur. I think about before Israel could be free from Egypt, the death of the firstborn had to occur. Before Israel can be atoned for their sins annually, the death of animals had to occur. And before God could provide new birth and regeneration the, the sacrificial death of Jesus had to occur for the atonement of our sins. And before new life can happen in our lives, before we can truly be spiritually free, the death of the old man has to occur. If I'm going to live in this new life of freedom in the presence of God, there are some things inside of me that must die. The scripture tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. If we have been buried with Christ in baptism, the old man has been crucified, and we are raised up to walk in newness of life. We must die to ungodly ha habits, ungodly habits, ungodly hang-ups. We must die to those besetting sins that so easily entangle the sins of selfishness, the sin of unbelief, the sin of faithlessness, the sin, the sin of doubt. Those things tangle us up and get us so trapped and intertwined with the world. We must set those things aside. We must die to those things. And we must look to Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Now the question is, what are, or what new thing? is God wanting to do in and through you in this coming year? What new thing is God wanting to do in 
and through you this year. I want to advise you to be watchful, to pay attention, and see where God is currently working and join him right there. You see, too often we are looking for magic. We want to feel something. We, we, we crave this mystical and spiritual experience. But often, God is working right in our midst. And if we would just open up our minds and open up our eyes and see what God is doing, God says, if I'm doing it in front of you, then that's where I need you to be. If you are seeing and you are noticing what God is doing, then that's what God wants you to do. You join him right there. What has God called you to do? Some of us are sitting here right now and there's a ministry that's been on the inside of us for some time. And, 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 and we have been so fearful. We have been so afraid to step out because who am I? I can't do that. I'm just a nobody. But if God has called you to it, God will make sure that it's done through you. Some of us have been sitting on ministry for years. Things that God has called you to do. But yet we sit and we're waiting on somebody, on, on somebody else to do it. And I tell you what, if you sit long enough, somebody else will do it. And you will think, man, I had that idea 10 years ago. Well, that was God calling you to do it 10 years ago. But because I couldn't get out of my own way, God had to give it to someone else. As I come to a close, there have been several occasions where I know God has put something on my heart to do. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. I need to do this first. I need to take care of this business first, and then I'll get around to it. I need you to start a ministry out on the street, Tim. I need you to go under the bridge. I'll get around to it. Someone else is doing it. Tim, I, I need you to start a Friday night worship for the homeless. I'll get around to it. Someone else does it. Tim, there's an apartment complex over there. And there are always young men hanging out. I need you to go over there and int int introduce yourself. I'll get around to it. Somebody else does it. What is my point? When there is this unction that you get from the Holy Spirit, if there is this holy, and you know that God has put this on you, and you wait, what you have effectively done is, the, is that you have quenched the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And God will get somebody else to do it. In this new season, I need you to pay attention to what God is doing. And when God gives you this urging, don't wait, don't beat around the bush. But let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's not be like Judah. 
when God is urging them, God is encouraging them. I need you to be a light to the nations, but yet and still they want to be like the nations. And God is constantly trying to provoke them, constantly trying to motivate them, constantly trying to encourage them. And they fail to hear him until they're put in a bad situation. And now their ears are open. Now their heart is open. Now their spirit is available to hear from God. Let that not be said of us that we reject or we fail to hear or we fail to act in this new season, in this new year. God is doing a new thing in you. Allow his work to work in you. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, we come to you this morning. Father, we thank you for your love and for your power. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Father, we come to you this morning and we're asking that you will look down upon each one of us and that our hearts will be open and that our spirits will be soft and that we will receive from you the gifts that you have for us. Father, we pray that you would open us up to what it is that you're doing here in this new season. Whether it's ministry, whether it's taking care of some needs that you have put on our hearts. Wherever you're working, God, and we see it, help us to understand that that's an invitation from you to join you there. Open up our minds, open up our hearts. Give us courage. Let not fear be a distraction to us. We thank you. And we bless you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We offer up this prayer. Amen.